Hello fiber friends and welcome to my kitchen. Today we are going to do an experiment and see if we can dye wool with mushrooms. To do this video I needed some mushrooms and unfortunately the areas around me where I could technically forage are not technically legal to be foraged. I have a lot of forest preserves around me and they don't allow anyone to forage anything in those places and if you get caught it's a pretty hefty fine that I'm not interested in. So I needed to find a way that I could get access to mushrooms beyond what you can find in the grocery store. So I've partnered with North Spore to make mushrooms happen. <laughs> they sent me a boom room which is a growing hut kind of like a greenhouse but it's for mushrooms. Um, I guess you could use it for a greenhouse but it worked for mushrooms for me. It has a vent in the top of it which is important for mushrooms because mushrooms need to have oxygen like people. Isn't that weird? Mushrooms are so weird. They're wonderful. So let's go take a look at the boom room and see what mushrooms we have to work with today. All right, I've opened it up and these are the mushrooms that we have in the boom room. <laughs> these are black king and I let them go a little too long. They've curled up on top. I'll show you what they look like. There we go. So different mushrooms will give you different colors depending on when you harvest them, if they're dried, if they're fresh, if they're frozen, and then of course the other modifiers and mordants and things that you put in with them. So these are a little late, but I needed the other mushrooms to catch up, so we'll see. We will see what they do. All right, next we have these. These are pink oyster. And I know that with mushrooms, you don't always get the color you expect. And I'm not sure if this is a dyeable pink. It's a little unknown if this is going to transfer to the wool. But like I said, it's an experiment, so I want to try. With the pink oysters, sometimes they come up without color. And I did read that if they are exposed to more light, they have more pink. So I made sure they had light and they're very pink. <laughs> And then these are the ones that I am the most hopeful about. These are chestnut mushrooms. I think I read somewhere that these are really delicious in like butternut squash soup. So like I said, if these don't die and do anything fun with the wool, I'll eat them because these fruiting blocks will have at least I think one more harvest after picking these mushrooms. They will fruit again. So I think we should just pick the mushrooms and head over to the kitchen for the next part. Well, look at that. Oh, mushrooms are so weird. I love it. There's the pink oysters. And finally, the chestnuts. All right, we're back in the kitchen and we need to get things set up to dye this wool that I have back there behind me. So the first thing we need to do is mordant the wool. It's already been thoroughly scoured. There's no lanolin left in it at all. So I am going to mordant the wool with alum. Basically, I'll just simmer it in a pot gently with alum. But to figure out how much wool we need to scour, or mordant I should say, we need to weigh our mushrooms because we are going to go Samesies. However much the mushrooms weigh is how much wool I will mordant. So let's head to the scale and figure out what we're working with. I got out my mushroom journal for taking some notes. So here's my page of mushroom dye.
here's a bit of a conundrum. This bunch of mushrooms, the Black King mushrooms, are uh, <laughs> heavy. They weigh 528 grams. And if we are going the one for one rate of dye stuff to stuff dyed, <laughs> then that's a lot of wool. <laughs> that's a lot of wool. And honestly, I'm not sure we're going to get that much color out of there. I really think that most of that weight is water. I'd rather be a little more conservative with my wool. So I think I'll go halvesies or maybe a quarter on that one. And then I'll do the one for one on the chestnut and the pink oyster because that's just 50 grams and 182 grams. So that's not quite as much, but it just you know, makes you think like how much dye stuff is in there versus how much water is it holding, what weights, and, and this is obviously clearly why it's going to be different every time. It's going to be dependent on if it's fresh or dried or previously frozen or what life stage it's in and all of this stuff. So it's really fascinating and I'm not sure that there's ever going to be a do this, this, this equals that. It's always going to be figuring it out as you go along and following a general set of guidelines. So that's kind of the fun of natural dyes. Um, but yeah, so that's the first adjustment I'm going to make. I'm going to mordant much less wool, much less wool than that. You know, I'm thinking about it. Maybe, maybe I'll just go 50, 50 grams for each mushroom type and, and leave it at that. I think that sounds good to me. I'm comfortable with that. Let's go 50 grams for each. So I will mordant 150 grams total. Making that adjustment on the wool down to 150 grams just changed the amount of alum that I need from 62 grams to 12 grams. That's much more reasonable. All right, let's get this mordant bath going and then I will start working on the mushroom baths. Lots of baths. This is now alum water, and I'm going to add my wool to it. Let's make sure nothing's too clumpy. This cormo is very fluffy. I'm going to get a stir stick because I don't want to put my hand down in there. make sure it's fully saturated and that there's no bubbles um, keeping anything dry in there. It needs to be fully uh, soaked up with the mordant so that it will take up the color and it will sit on the stove for uh, maybe an hour. I'm going to keep it at a low simmer and I'm going to stir it around frequently and just keep an eye on it. I don't want a rolling boil but I do want some little bit of heat according to the directions on the website I found. So that's what we'll do. I'm going to work on extracting the color from the pink oysters first. This one I will be really surprised if we get a pink color from this mushroom, truly. I'm expecting that maybe we'll get a green Possibly? We'll see. So I'm going to break these apart just so they have a good surface area to be exposed to in the water. And I am going to simmer these at a very low temperature, like keeping it around 140. If you get too hot with your water, it can, um, it can destroy the color from the mushrooms. It can turn everything brown. So we don't want to get too crazy with the temperature. So I'm going to keep a close eye on this one. I'm using a little pot. I want to get the color out 
of the mushrooms in the bath and then I'm going to strain the mushrooms out of here before putting it together with the wool and the reason is I don't want to pick little mushroom bits out of the wool like it's a pretty clean fleece and it doesn't have too much VM in it I don't need to be putting more VM back into it <laughs> right <laughs> so I'll do this for all the mushrooms actually and uh, get as much color extracted as I can and this is the part that takes a while so I'll be back much later see you then checking in to see how these colors are going with the extraction this is the black king and it I can't even see the bottom because there is let me flip my spoon around there we go so I can't see the bottom of the pot because there's some color down there whether that's gonna work for dye or not we will see but it is coming out with like a dark gray gray brown so it's doing something and that one smells really good actually and then over here I can't get my burner to turn low enough so I kind of put it on the side I really don't want to overheat it so this is the chestnut and for the chestnut we're getting a brown color in there as expected this is the one I'm the most hopeful will do something um, I think if any of them give me color that's this is the one that'll probably do it and then coming around here so I don't burn my phone this is the pink oyster in the back and it has just a smidge of kind of I was thinking green that was my instinct and there's just a smidge of kind of green um, but I'm expecting green brown maybe gray brown like a cool brown that's what I'm hoping, and we'll see. I'm back. It is much later in the evening for me, for you. I don't know what time it is, <laughs> but it's time to move on to the next step of the process. So I have my wool mordanted, and I have my mushrooms. Hopefully, if they have a color compound in them, they have had that extracted. So I'm going to strain out the mushroom bits. I don't want to pick that out of my wool later and take the liquid that the mushrooms cooked in, you know, whatever's in there, and uh, use that to dye the wool. So I will strain out the mushroom bits and then put the wool in that liquid. We're gonna heat it up, heat it up, maintain temperature for a little bit, but then I'm just gonna shut it off and go to bed. And then I will check it in the morning. So let's strain some mushrooms. Let's do the chestnuts first. Try and turn this so you can see the liquid. I don't know. It's not very brown. Maybe a little gold. I do know that sometimes you can get something like this that looks like nothing and then you throw a little iron at it and the whole thing shifts into a beautiful moody kind of color. So. I'm just gonna cross my fingers and we'll see and I'm gonna save all the mushroom bits and put them in the fridge I don't know if they're useful edible I don't know but at the very least I'll put them outside tomorrow and the squirrels can have them so it is kind of golden in there maybe we'll get a yellow I don't know I'm gonna grab my wool 
The wool is damp. It has been more dented, rinsed, uh, put through the spin dryer, left to sit, and then wet it again. <laughs> it's been through it. All right, so I've got my wool down in there and it's not quite enough liquid to cover it, so I am gonna add a little water. So you can see, I hope you can see, it in the viewfinder of the camera, it doesn't look as vibrant as it is in person. So I'm not sure how well this will translate on camera, but to me, it does look like kind of a creamy brown color. So we'll go with that and see what happens. All right. Next, I'm straining out the pink oysters. I think they look really weird in there now. <laughs> that looks like, I don't know. That looks like some Halloween stuff in there. <laughs> so this is the vaguest shade of green. But like I said, we're just gonna go with it and see. Maybe none of these will die, but we tried. because we have the most color in the bath to start with. So we'll see. I'll put the wool in there and then put everybody on the heat. I don't know, what do you think? Guess we'll see. friends, I have disappointing news. <laughs> These mushrooms did not work. If there's any color in the wool, it is so light as to hardly be noticeable. And the beauty of natural dye is that a lot of them will sort of change, maybe mature kind of in their color over time. And uh, so if this fades, there's nothing to fade. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just all really, really white. So I do have a backup plan in case this happened, which I thought it might happen. I wasn't positive about these mushrooms. I think that they will be fantastic culinary mushrooms. And the blocks will fruit again. So there's no worries there. You can get uh, two or sometimes maybe more crops off of those fruiting blocks. So I am not sad that I tried the mushrooms from North Spore. I am actually really excited about the mushrooms and I'm going to especially make some chestnut mushrooms because I think some butternut squash soup with chestnut mushrooms just sounds like the most fall thing I've ever heard and I think that would be delicious. So I'm going to keep growing some mushrooms but um my backup plan for the wool is to rinse all of these out and then dye them again. But I'm going to use matter root uh, because I have some matter root. So I will go do that. It's the same procedure. I don't have to mordant these again. I don't think. It's all an experiment. We'll figure it out as we go. But basically I'm just going to rinse out the mushroom water and then um, gently heat it again over a, uh, you know, bath on the stove, but with some matter in the water instead. And it should turn a lovely orange. So we will see. I think that does it for the mushroom experiment. What do you think? Would you try something on your wool that you're fairly certain might not work? Would you risk it? Would you be adventurous? Let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you next time. Happy spinning!